right, all right. Take your seats. Cut the chatter. We're going to talk about the 1911 pistol. Why are we talking about the 1911 pistol? Well, I did have someone in my comment section say, why is everyone freaking out about these 1911s? What's the big deal about them? What's the big deal? Well, I can understand the question because 1911s aren't your most practical pistol for this day and age. They're not the lightest. They're 39 ounces. But that's not what this is all about. That's not why we have 1911s here. That's not why your gun enthusiast would have a 1911. But a gun enthusiast like me and other people would have a 1911 because it's like having a piece of history, especially when you've got one this plain Jane like this here ATI FX 1911, $367. And this plain Jane design is like some of the original 1911s by Colt and such from 1911. And the 1911 part should tell you the rest, history. This pistol has been in service, well not this particular pistol, the 1911 has been in service from 1911 all the way up till today. That's well over a hundred years. Some people are still using 1911s. It's one of the most reliable gun designs and it's one of the most genius gun designs I might say. And it's one of the most copied gun designs in the pistol world. So there you go. This has been in service in World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Korean War, etc., etc. Some armies, some police forces are still carrying 1911s. And that should tell you about 1911s right there with that history. Uh, if it wasn't a reliable pistol, we wouldn't have kept it around for so long. And that's another one of the things about the 1911 is that if you follow the formula for the 1911, you're going to get one that functions just like most other 1911s. Now I know that there is a variety of different qualities, a variety of different craftsmanship, tolerances, precision in different 1911s. I understand that. But for a person, say uh, on a budget, something like this 1911 right here is exactly a 1911 and it functions like a 1911. Now there's others like uh, Rock Island Armory. The largest producer of 1911s in the world today is Rock Island Armory and they have a variety of different 1911s that shoot a variety of different calibers. And I might say, besides Rock Island Armory, most gun manufacturers are doing 1911s themselves, right? You can get one from Sig Sauer, you can get a 1911 at EAA. You can get a 1911 from Rock Island Armory, you get one from Springfield and Ruger and Smith & Wesson, and the list goes on. But when they follow the formula, for the 1911, your parts in your 1911 could be interchanged with other 1911s. Now that does not apply to some manufacturers which employ sort of proprietary uh, measures for some of their parts. You might get one manufacturer, say a guide rod or mainspring or hammer or something that they may have done something just a little bit different. But for the most part, a lot of your parts on the 1911 are going to be interchangeable with others. And that is why the 1911 is also very popular with people. If I wanted to, I could take some Wilson combat parts and put them into my 1911 and vice versa. And you can also get 1911 pistols in a variety of different variants. For example, here is my star model BM. This is more like a compact. It's not exactly like a 1911. As a matter of fact, this shoots nine millimeter compared to the regular 1911's 45 ACP. But the Star Model BM shoots 9mm. It follows a lot of the design from the 1911. It has the spurred hammer and all that other stuff, but uh, it does not have a grip safety. That's one of the big differences here is that it doesn't have a grip safety, but this is a 1911 variant. So you got the Star Model BM. The Star Model B is bigger. How about the Ballister Molina? The Ballister Molina is a nice variant of the 1911. I want one of those, and if I can get one in good enough shape, I will certainly snap one up. How about the Sistema from Argentina? And theirs even has the grip safety back here. The Sistema pretty closely follows the 1911 formula. Not only those variants, but there's other countries that make their own um, offshoot of a 1911. But you can also get your 1911 in a variety of different calibers. You can get a 1911 that shoots the 380 ACP. You can get one that shoots, of course, 45 ACP and 9mm. But you can also get them that shoot 38 Super, 10mm, 
and Kunin makes one that shoots 357 Magnum. Holy damn. And right on up. So how many calibers are there for 1911s? I have no idea. That's just the ones that I know about. Though 45 ACP is the most common caliber and 9mm found in your 1911s today. Look at Rock Island Armory's repertoire. They've got all sorts of calibers there. And Browning makes a 1911 right now that shoots 380 ACP. Kind of cool. I want one of those, at least for the novelty factor. But for the most part, 1911s, they are not that practical for concealed carry, right? 39 ounces and they're 8.6 inches long standardly. And then, of course, there's your commander size 1911s and other short versions that people are making. But most companies make their 1911s in the standard frame as well as the commander or compact. And you can also get your 1911s in varying quality and precision. Say, for example, how about uh, Infinity Arms 1911s? Look at that. Okay, now we're talking about thousands of dollars here. Infinity Arms 1911s there. How about uh, regular Wilson Combat? You can go on up to three and four thousand dollars with Wilson Combat, maybe even higher, seven thousand. How about this here, Cabot Guns right here? How about this one right here, which is made of meteorite? What? Oh yeah, meteorite, and they also have some that claim to be made of uh, woolly mammoth tooth on the grips and stuff like that. I don't know how they manage that, but you know, you're talking about thirty-five thousand dollar nineteen elevens. And some special sets coming out of Cabot Guns, which are about up to $4.6 million and more for a set of two mirroring 1911s. Wow. So people have taken the 1911 design and absolutely run with it. Not me. In my case, I took a step down. I had the Ruger SR 1911 and I went to the ATI FX 1911 because I just like the ideal of the GI Combat 1911 and I like that a lot more than the more dressed up ones like the Ruger SR 1911. And again, not to mention, uh, if you have a 1911, you can get basically parts from anyone who makes 1911s, including magazines. This here is an ACMAG. I have some Mechgar. I believe I have a Wilson Combat somewhere. And they all work in the 1911. And magazines, just like anybody else, you know, some magazines may not exactly work the best with another company's 1911 but for the most part they're going to be interchangeable some filing may need to be done on some magazines if you're transferring them to a different 1911 or something like that you know there's always something that has to be done but for the most part the functionality should be the same the fit should be the same and of course if you're staying with the same caliber you can't take a nine millimeter magazine and stick it in the 45 acp and expect it to work but uh that being said the 1911, why have a 1911? I say why not? Because this is a piece of history, but it's also a very reliable piece of history. There's a reason the 1911's been around since 1911. 39 ounces and 8.6 inches of history, and though this was made in the Philippines by Shooter's Arms Manufacturing, they're following the formula. This is still a 1911. And for those people on a budget, you've always got options like this. And for those who want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars, you've always got those options like the Cabot guns and stuff like that. So there's something out there for everybody, but no one has to go without a 1911. As a matter of fact, I say get one for your whole family. But folks, I am too improper. Thank you for watching. My email address is scrolling across the bottom of the screen as we speak right now. That's too improper at gmail.com. And you can reach Tattoo Cat. He's still around. That's tattoocat at gmail.com. Write, and either of us would be happy to answer your questions, provided you're going to be polite about whatever it is you have to say and if we have the time. And don't forget to check out Not Just Guns, www.notjustguns.com in Mason, Michigan. And if you like the shirts that you see me and Tattoo Cat wearing here in this picture, you can get yours too. You can look swank like us if you go to Abaddon Apparel. That's Abaddon Apparel. Not only do they have two improper gear, and lots of it, they also have their own gear. And they have a variety of different other t-shirts from other sites that you may know. That's Abaddon Apparel. So folks, thanks for watching. Keep on protecting your families and yourselves, and your country's flag, and your country's honor.
it is always the admirable thing to do. Here comes the next